A friend on Facebook recently shared a link to this article, Oldest Ever Human Genetic Evidence Clarifies Dispute Over Our Ancestors. This article makes a handful of claims. One, that for the first time we now have DNA from the archaic human species Homo antecessor. Two, that this DNA is twice as old as the oldest human genetic material that was ever found before. Three, that this discovery is also evidence of early human cannibalism. Four, that genomic sequence analysis clarifies or resolves the relationships of all subsequent human species. And specifically five, that Homo antecessor was a sister group to the clade containing the other taxonomic human races, that being uh, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, rather than Homo antecessor being a common ancestor to all of the others in that set. All of this is possible and plausible, and the friend who shared it is a skeptical activist with an academic interest in archaeology. He describes his YouTube channel as being against pseudoscience, pseudohistory. So the article he linked was from a respected source. Heritage Daily describes itself as an independent archaeology news source. We pride ourselves in remaining a factual, pseudo-free platform and a valued resource to the academic community. So I have no reason to doubt what I've read so far. The claims being made are attributed to scientists from the University of Copenhagen in collaboration with colleagues from the National Research Center in Human Evolution in Burgos, Spain, and other institutions. The only person the article specifically named was Frido Welker, postdoctoral research fellow at the Globe Institute University of Copenhagen and the first author of the paper that was submitted to peer review. Heritage Daily said that all of this was originally published on the first day of this very month in Nature, arguably the most respected of all peer-reviewed scientific journals. But the only link provided was to the University of Copenhagen Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences, not to the specific study and not to the cited article in Nature either. Being aware that the publishing date is April Fool's Day, I googled Frito Welker, 800,000 year old tooth, and found a number of other sources telling the same story. Only one out of all those articles bothered to include the link to the actual study so that I could finally read the original paper. Now, I have learned from past experience of being repeatedly deceived by public media numerous times not to trust any reporter's explanation of scientific studies or what they actually show. And this is a typical example of the reason why I don't trust the media to report on science anymore. The actual peer-reviewed article begins with the statement that this is not 800,000-year-old DNA. For the oldest remains, the molecular study of these relationships is hindered by the degradation of ancient DNA. However, recent research has demonstrated that an analysis of ancient proteins can address this challenge. I suspect that the first reporters of this story misread or misunderstood this because the way this is phrased could lead one to interpret that they found some clever way to still sequence ancient DNA anyway, despite the degradation. I thought so too, at first, until I read the very next sentence. Because the article doesn't even say that they found DNA. Instead, it says they compared dental enamel proteomes of Homo antecessor and Homo erectus. I paused there, confused, because we don't have Homo erectus DNA. And that's when I knew that something was wrong. Homo erectus is popularly considered to be the crown or father of all other taxonomic races of humans to occur in the last couple million years, being sapiens, Neanderthals, Denisovans, uh, Homo heidelbergensis, and maybe some more. Homo erectus is older even than Homo antecessor. So having erectus DNA would be a much bigger deal than all these popular magazines are making out of having antecessor DNA. But they're not even looking at DNA. They were comparing dental enamel proteomes. What reporter is even going to know what that means? A proteome is the entire set of proteins that is or can be expressed in a genome, cell, tissue, or organism at a given time. While it sounds like that might include DNA, a couple experts have assured me that it doesn't. Yet, this sensational claim of having found the oldest human DNA ever was repeated, not just in this one independent archaeology site and a few lighthearted science sources like Sci-Fi Wire and I Fall Down Laughing Science. It was also reported in Science Daily, in the New York Times, and even the Geoscience Research Institute. Did none of these reporters actually read the Nature article firsthand? If they had, they must not have understood what they were reading. 
Several other reliable sources called these proteins genetic material instead of DNA. Even Reuters made that mistake, although they also included an important clarification, saying that scientists retrieved these ancient proteins from fossilized teeth using a method called paleoproteomics that can find genetic material in fossils too old to contain DNA because of chemical degradation over time. So Reuters didn't call it DNA, but they still thought it was genetic. The Reuters article also revealed a logical inconsistency with that assumption. It said that the Homo erectus tooth that was used in the study was 1.77 million years old, more than twice as old as the antecessor tooth, which itself was twice as old as the oldest DNA anyone has yet really discovered. So if they're going to say that Homo antecessors dental proteomes count as the oldest ever genetic material, then if we're comparing apples to apples, then what about the dental proteomes of the Homo erectus used in the same study but that are twice that age? It seems that one or a few initial reporters were not paying attention and then a national news network just repeated and amplified their error. It feels strange to me to be the only person realizing that something is wrong with so many respected sources all telling the same story, especially since I'm just a YouTuber, but you know, I've found stuff like this before. That's how I know that saccharitis is not the oldest deuterostome. It's not a deuterostome at all. It's not even an Ephrazoan. But who am I to call out such a respected senior scientist at a prestigious institution just because he allegedly deliberately misclassified something in defense of his religious beliefs in an intelligent designer? But that's another subject for another time. So just to be sure that maybe it's not just my arrogant undergraduate autodidact lack of understanding gone old Dunning-Kruger, I reached out to a couple of geneticists I know whom I've worked with on a couple of different projects. They were amused and confused that they're studying dental plaque and they're calling that genetic? They both gave me a firm clarification that proteomes are not genetic material unless you only concentrate on the material part. They're more like a genetic byproduct. Proteins last a lot longer than DNA. And once the information is converted into the form of protein, it's always protein from then on, and it can't ever code anymore. And that means that all of these journalistic accounts of the study are wrong. Proteomes are not genetic material, and so they're, they're certainly not DNA, and that means that they're not the oldest human DNA either. And that's what everyone's headline reads. Imagine how Frido Welker et al. must feel about this. They went to bed satisfied that they'd published a clever way to use dental plaque to build a phylogeny, and they wake up to see every single news source around the world praising them for having discovered the oldest human DNA, ignoring for the moment how that devalues their actual contribution, which they have a right to be proud of. How do you counter the entire global media network to tell everyone everywhere that that's not what we said? What the original peer-reviewed study actually does say is accurate one really can use these protein sequences to build phylogenies. And what they've built is consistent with other data. So the research is entirely valid as it was originally published, but not as it was subsequently reported distorted. Out of the five claims made in the popular media, the first two are completely bogus. Frido Welker et al. did not discover the 800,000-year-old DNA of Homo antecessor. But that, unfortunately, is everybody's headline. The third claim of evident cannibalism is, I think, uninteresting and irrelevant, as it is a completely different topic. The fourth and fifth claims, however, clarifying phylogenetic relationships by comparing subtle differences in the protein sequences of these two very closely related species instead of sequencing their genetic orthologs, are not controversial and could be substantiated with further study. Any working scientist likely knows from experience how sensationalism spoils science. I gave a speech about exactly that in Colorado a few years ago. Therein, I gave a series of examples of studies that were grossly misrepresented in the popular media, whether through the innocent ignorance of the reporter or because of deliberately misleading statements from the scientist, which unfortunately has happened a few times, and that's why there's a peer review process, or because editors want to embellish everything to make it sound more interesting. Don't ever do that, because that's why every new experiment or discovery that really only matches predictions or concern, or, and confirms the status quo 
is always reported in the media as if it has either broken records or forced us to rethink our theories and rewrite our ancestral history. That's why I had to make this video, to correct the error and point out that the oldest DNA ever yet discovered is not 800,000 years old. It's only half that old. DNA has a half-life of 521 years, so half of your DNA will have decomposed half a millennium after you die. And in a thousand years, half of what's left of that will be gone too. But you've got billions of base pairs to start with, so it'll take quite a while to degrade them all. According to some of the things I've read, the maximum age that still has enough connected conons to be sequenced at all is 1.5 million years. So it is at least possible that someone could find DNA that is 800,000 years old, but they haven't yet. Not for humans, at least. As I understand it, the oldest DNA ever found for anything was in a rhinoceros tooth from 1.7 million years ago. The last few codons remnant of genetic material could last as long as 6.8 million years, but that's only under pristine conditions. So that means that no one ever found dinosaur DNA either, despite all the bogus claims from folks who only like to believe bogus claims and who perversely reject everything we can prove to be true. Those were dinosaur proteins, not DNA. And even if the public doesn't understand the difference, they ought to be informed when they or their news sources are confused or misled by reading, reporting, and repeating something incorrectly.